In this lecture here, we want to continue talking about counting methods, and we're going to focus on two methods called um, permutations and combinations. So our objectives to working through this lecture is we're going to solve counting problems using first permutations, then we're going to solve counting problems using combinations, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to compute probabilities involving permutations and combinations. Okay, so let's start with um, permutations. So what exactly is a permutation? So a permutation is an ordered arrangement, arrangement excuse me, in which R objects are chosen from N distinct where they're different objects and repetition is not allowed. Okay, so what we're going to have here is we're going to have N objects. Okay, and that's going to be greater than or equal to the number of objects we want to pick from. Like, for example, we'll do something like 10 objects and we want to pick um, or arrange seven of them, something like that. All right, the symbol which we denote as N, P, R, the, these N and R are subscripted here, as you can see, represents the permutations of R objects selected from N objects. Okay, now um, we're talking about ordered arrangements here. So the thing about permutations that's going to be incredibly important is the order is important or it matters. All right, so this is the formula for it. So the number of permutations of n distinct objects taken from R at a time. So the number of arrangements of R objects chosen from n objects, which as we said in the previous slide, the n objects are distinct. Repetitions of the objects are not allowed. What that means is after an object is selected, can't be selected again, and order is important. So I'll read this as n pick R objects or n permutations of R, and it's just equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, okay? The good news is uh, you don't have to stress so much about this formula here. I'm gonna show you how to do this in your calculator in, um, in just a second. Okay, so let's, let's try this one. In how many ways can horses in a 10 horse race finish first, second, or third? Okay, so first off, I have 10 horses, that's my n. All right, and if I want to figure out how many different ways these horses can finish in first, second, or third, I want to select three of them. Okay. Now the next question you have to ask yourself, so all of a sudden you can see this is an N and R. Does order matter? Well, yes, it's a race. So obviously in a race, order matters, okay? So this is going to be that permutation formula I just showed you. Okay, so the 10 horses are distinct. Once a horse crosses the finish line, that horse will not cross the finish line again. And in a race, order is obviously important and matters. So we have a permutation of 10 objects taken three at a time. So the top three horses can finish in. It would be 10 pick three objects. So going back, you can see the formula. The N goes first in the formula. So we have 10 pick three objects or 10 permutations of three. So that's n factorial, so that's the 10, the n, divided by, you have to figure out what n minus r is. Well, 10 minus three is just seven. So then just to show this by hand, okay, you would go 10 factorial is 10 times nine times eight times seven times six, da, 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 but seven times six times five times four times three, two, one is seven factorial. Denominator is seven factorial. And really what's happening here is the 7 factorial and the 7 factorial cancel. And you're just left with 10 times 9 times 8, which is 720 ways. Wow, that's a lot. So the good news is, is your calculator can also do this very easily. So I'm going to load up both the TI-83 and the TI-84 calculator so you can see this. And to do this in the TI-83, if you want to go 10 pick 3 objects, you're going to hit the math button on your calculator. You're going to scroll over to PROB, and you should see right there NPR. I'm going to go down to NPR there. Hit enter, and then it's just 10. And then I'm going to move over to the 3, and you get 720. How you do it in the TI-83 is a little bit, a little bit trickier. Um, not, not as bad, it just, it's a little bit different. You have to start with the first number. So you have to put the 10 first. And then you're gonna press your math button. 
you're going to scroll over to PRB right there. And you see number two, same thing, it's the NPR. I'm going to go down to number two. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to put the three in. So notice what I got there, the 720. All right, you get the same answer with the calculator. Just how you put it in is a little bit different. All right, now let's talk about combinations. So uh, even before I do that, going back, the permutations uh, order matters. In most examples here for order matters, it's going to be it's going to be either a race, so it's going to be a race, or the problem will say the order is important. Or the order matters. Okay, it will say that explicitly, explicitly. All right, so now combinations. The only difference with combinations now here is, is basically when the order doesn't matter. Okay, so a combination is a collection without regard of, to order of n objects, um, n distinct objects without repetition. So again, re no repetition. So the symbol ncr, so I'll read this as n combinations of r or n choose r, represents the number of combinations of n distinct objects taken r at a time. Okay, so the big thing about combinations that's really important is the order is not important. Okay, the order does not matter. But again, then the rest of it is still the N and R, N and R stuff like we saw in permutations. So again, uh, the number of different arrangements of R objects chosen from N objects in which the N objects are distinct, repetition of objects is not allowed, and order is not important is given by this formula. So it's NCR, so again the N comes first. So it's N factorial divided by, you still have the N minus R factorial, but what's a little extra here is you have this R factorial on the outside of the denominator down here. Okay, but again, I'm gonna just show you real quickly on the next slide how this is done, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use your calculator to use this formula. Okay. How many different simple random samples of size 4 can be obtained from a population whose size is 20? Okay, so what you're seeing here, right off the bat, I have a sample, a population size of 20, and I want sample sizes of 4. So I want to select 4 from 20. So it's an N and R problem. Okay, here, if you're going to be part of the sample if you're selected first or fourth, so order does not matter. or it's not important. Okay, so the 20 individuals in the population are distinct, obviously. In addition, the order in which individuals are selected is unimportant, because if you're selected first or fourth, you're still part of the sample. Thus, the number of simple random samples of size four from a population of size 20 is a combination of 20 objects taken four at a time. So we're just gonna use that formula with n is equal to 20 and r is equal to 4. So you can see right here, um, you can follow the formula. And, it, and just plugging in, remember, this is my n, and this is my r. So it's n factorial, which is 20 factorial, r factorial on the outside, which is 4, and then 20 minus 4 factorial to get to this. 20 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 16 factorial. So now you could work this out if you wanted to um, by hand, but and you'll get 4,845. But the good news is, is your calculator will do this as well. All right, so we want to find 20, choose 3. So I'm going to press Math. I'm going to go over to PROB again. And look, option number 3 is NCR. So I'm going to go down to NCR and hit Enter. I want 20 choose four. I think I said three before, but I want 20, choose four. My apologies. And look, you get the same thing. On your calculator, on the TID3, what you need to do is you need to put the 20 first. Unfortunately, it's bugging out on my So let me just load that up. So 
So you need to put the number first, 20, then math, PRB, you go down here to number three, and you just put the four last, and look, you get the same answer. So you want to use your calculator for this stuff and not try to do it by hand. Okay, so as we see, there are 4,845 different simple random samples of size 4 from a population whose size is 20. Wow, which is a ton. All right, let's go on and talk about how you compute probabilities involving permutations and combinations. All right, so we'll, we'll do this problem. Suppose the mathematics department at WCC consists of nine women and seven men. So the total number of people here is 16, okay? of which there are nine women and seven men, okay? Suppose two are selected at random to attend a conference, okay? So I'm just gonna select two people at random um, from the math department and those two people are gonna go on this conference. Okay, what is the probability that two women are selected? Okay. Well, we know that the classical definition of probability is a simple division problem. The denominator is just going to be the total number of ways to select the two faculty members. Okay. But now what goes in the numerator is the number of the ways we could select because we want specifically two women. So just total number of ways To women. All right, well, you got to figure out the number of ways to select the faculty. Uh, does order matter here? You have to ask yourself this. And the answer is no, right? If you're selected first or second, you're still going on the conference. So the number of ways you could select the two faculty, well, there's 16 faculty, and since order doesn't matter, I just want to choose two of them. And now you got to figure out the number of ways you can select the two women. Well, there's nine women, and I want to select two of them, in which order doesn't matter. So this is just nine choose two. So I'm just going to do this in the TI-84 calculator. So math, PROB, nine choose two. Looks like it's 36. Now we got to find 16 choose 2. So I'm going to go math. Go down to NCR. 16 and 2. And that looks like it's 120. So 36 divided by 120. You get 0 0.3. So there's a, you know, 30% chance that you would select two women. What is the probability two men are selected? Okay, well again, that's just gonna be, the denominator is gonna be the total number of ways to select two faculty, which we just did. divided by the total number of ways to select two men here. Well, we know that this denominator is still 16 choose two. Well, you, so you can see exactly how this goes, right? So there's seven faculty members and I wanna choose two of them here. So let's find out now what seven choose two is. right here. It looks like it's 21. So 21 divided by 120. And you get 0 0.175.
There you go. So not too bad. Hopefully when you see to tackle this one, um, definitely the hardest part here is I think kind of figuring out like, does order matter? Does order not matter? All right, let's try another one. So in the Illinois lottery, an urn consists of balls numbers one to 52. From this urn, six balls are randomly chosen without replacement. Okay, so you can see right here, there's gonna be 52 balls and you're gonna choose six of them. So it's an N and R problem, okay? So for a $1 bet, a player chooses two sets of six numbers, okay? So you get two sets of six numbers. To win, all six numbers must match those chosen from the urn, okay? The order in which the balls are selected does not matter. So does not matter. So what this is saying here is it's a combination problem. And any problem I give you involving a lottery, unless it explicitly says the order matters, usually for lotteries, the order of selection doesn't matter. Okay, so with a $1 bet, what is the probability of winning the lottery? So the probability of winning is given by the number of ways a ticket could be could win divided by the size of the sample space. So each ticket has two sets of six numbers, so there are two chances to win with each ticket. Okay, that's important. Two chances, okay. So the sample space S is the number of ways that six objects can be selected from 52. Like notice how I put this up here. Well, that's just 52 choose six because order didn't matter, okay. So the number, so the sample size here, 52 choose six, you can just plug it into your calculator. You don't actually need to go out with the formula here, but you, we can see that it is 20,358,520 ways. So each ticket has two sets of six numbers. So a player has two chances of winning. So for a $1 ticket, okay, with a $1 ticket, if E is the event probability of a winning ticket, so if event E is winning tickets, we want to find the probability that I have or I'm holding a winning ticket. All right, then you can see the probability of that event E is just the two tickets that I have divided by the total, which is equal to that incredibly small number right there. Okay, so don't quit your day job for this. And you'll notice um, for any any lottery I give you or ask you to solve for, the probabilities are generally going to be incredibly small. All right, class, I hope combinations and permutations make a little bit of sense after this lecture.